They say beauty is skin deep. Well, at Eisen D Beauty Store, we provide skin products specifically tailored to repair any type of skin and blemishes. From moisturizers, sheer butter, knuckle remover, body lotions, spot correctors, and a whole lot more. We have stores and representatives right around the globe. Contact any of our representatives nearest to you. For more information, contact Ison D. Glowing Store. It's the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy. Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola7 Owen, we're Kwama Dono, the Chief A Marshal on your number one podcast show in the land, the Ola7 Podcast Show, and this segment is called the Genius Kids Show. I love this one, the Genius Kids, you know, where I get to interact with the most genius kids here, we, I mean, we have here in Zimbabwe. And uh, today is a different day altogether. We've, we're going to be uh, debating on a topic which I'm going to, you know, uh, tell you now, but before that... Uh, it's, it, it looks like it's going to be like a um, girl's affair. Uh, well, there's no, <laughs> and there's no any, you know, boy here uh, to defend the other gender. But anyways, it's still fine. It's the genius kids. And I've got um, these young girls from different schools representing, you know, different schools. And also, you know, um, this topic so, but let me just allow them to introduce themselves, guys. Over to you. Hello, my name is Cheryl Chasakara, and I'm from Northwest High School. Mm-hmm. Northwest High School, which is in Harare, right? Yes. Okay, I think I've been to your school once. Sure. Yeah, I came the other day. Uh, debate thing. I was there. Yes, you were the high the school nationals, debate. Like exactly, you. I was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I came. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you? Hello, I'm Val Shambari. I'm representing Townet Group of Schools in Glendale. Glendale. Okay, Townet. Oh, it's, it's, it's a new school? Uh, not necessarily. It's mm-hmm. five years old. Five years it's old. Origin, it originates from South Africa. Oh, okay. I see. Townet. Okay. Okay, I'm Rapelang Muzuza. I'm representing Watershed College in Marondera, but then I'm also representing the Junior Parliament. Okay, all the way from Marondera. Guys, you are being represented here, Marondera, uh, Glendale, and Harare, respectively. So, guys, um, <laughs> Pacha Fire. Rapilang, Ani, she has a, a, a Sutu name. Sutu name. Sisutu, you know, from South Africa. But she says, uh, well, I, I don't know how to speak uh, Sutu. So I'm going to teach you one or two words. So firstly, again, if I say Dumelang, you say Ahe. Ahe. Yes. Dumelang. Ahe. Ahe. I'm learning. Uh, great greetings, guy. I just yes. like, uh, greetings. <laughs> then also, um, if I say Likai, you say Liteng Likai. Liteng Likai. Yes, Likai. Yes, yes, yes. At least you can see. Oh, you are sitting with eh. Of once the greet of one, greet of one, good morning, Papa. Yeah, yeah. I got I got once, and then you switch to English forever. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, um, this house will debate on um, you know issues. I mean, Doctor Anya, you team. Sue parents who do not take action to protect their children from early marriages. You know, that's our topic for today, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Trust me. But before we get into that, um, there was an uh, article, you know, I saw on H Metro um, a few weeks ago. Uh, I actually reported that uh, uh, 14 years. 
vanayo vagasara amai vagafa uh, 14 we are 14 years old heartbreaking loss so there's an article you could see your mama headlines rakubada jiti family demands compensation before burying 40 year old girl who passed away after giving birth to twins so this is something that will be i mean of interest mudzimba uh, omo kune zvakanda zvikuitika eh despite kuti vana vari kukura nokukasika but kukura kwao kwe board doesn't necessarily mean kuti they are now ripe and ready but now it's happening and taona zvakakodzira guys for us to talk about this you know issue is a very sensitive issue a um, few weeks back again i saw on h metro i mean well done kudos to h metro they are doing a great, great job we are, i mean in terms of just kuti nyai dzinge dzichibuda pa chain exposing all these issues uh, i i saw it on h metro on their social media handle as well uh, pa instagram a pine a family a group and a family um vagabatwa vachito badarisa pfuma ya chito charge kwa mwana ingari you know under age achito onzi tato maroro achito verengwa pa pa but vakazosungwa se family so it's happening i'm following closely um what's happening to this family ye mwana ane 14 years old kuti chakanya zvomba say ichi chiri kuitika but uh, you know what i've got uh, these guys uh, to talk about this which ought to debate about it so there is the affirmative side and the non affirmative side so the topic again sue parents who do not take action to protect their children from early marriages uh, so talking about that zvakamira say so um, who is representing the affirmative side i am ramela Okay, great. And the non-affirmative? I am. You are. Yes. And you? I'm neutral. You're neutral. Oh, you are. Oh, it's going to be interesting. At least it's I don't know I'm neutral. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's <laughs> that's fine. So, um the first question, let's let's, let's talk about it. Um, and, um from the affirmative side. This is for you, Ramilang. What is it that uh, you call early marriages in in this debate? Okay, I would say maybe early marriages, right, should be the marriage of anyone under the age of 18 because we already know that according to the constitution of Zimbabwe, a child is anyone under the age of 18. So if you're married at those ages, right, meaning you're still a child and you are being married off, you're going to a family when you're still a child and you're self and you can't take care of other people, right? Mm-hmm. Meaning that that is what we should call an early marriage because it's happening earlier before you are ready to actually do it. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um You know why do you think um are the causes of early marriages in modern societies? Okay, maybe in modern societies right. We have our parents themselves. They're still parents who are still one no longer moving with the actual age we're in right. Mm. The new generation is only taking part in children nowadays because they're saying that some parents still say that as a girl child you should still submit to the male figures and some parents to say that no you should be married at this age because I was married at this age as a mother right? mm-hmm. so we have those backward ideologies that we still have in this current generation then we also look at those people who are in local parents like the church people mm-hmm. they are also parents to our children why because they take care of the child as the same as a parent does right? mm-hmm. so if those church leaders are going to be influencing a child to get married at a young age then that means even in this modern society they are also to blame mm okay so who do you think should be blamed for the increase of uh, you know cases um of such like i said i believe parents are the main cause parents. in this way i will be saying parents is everyone who takes care of the child mm-hmm. from the church leaders to the teachers in local parents mm-hmm. and to the parents the biological ones the guardians who take care of the child because they all have a part to play when you're raising up a child right it's not only the mother that takes care of the child the father is also there there's also going to be the church leader who will be telling the child no you should pray this way mm-hmm. pray that way yeah. there's going to be the teacher who will be teaching in school and we already have children who are already, who are learning right we're saying mm-hmm. we're emancipating our girl child we are also taking our boy child into the journey mm-hmm. so when you teach something like that to a child they will end up knowing it and at the end of the day mm-hmm. we have this early marriage is increasing and increasing so i believe like what the motion says if we are going to actually tackle this problem mm-hmm. it should be parents who are going to play who are we are going to blame and parents who are going to actually change the situation why the parents and not the children themselves because Charity because these, these children you know you know i mean you know remember you find your boyfriend who campus 
There is no mama there. There is no daddy there. But you guys saying, okay, g- give me your number. I will give you mine. So let's chat. How are you having your day? You know, matrimonial relationship. There is no mama there. There is no daddy there. So why are the parents to blame? I'm saying charity begins at home. In the beginning, if I'm a younger sister and I saw my sister doing that, mm. right, I will know that that's how it's done and I'll actually start following in those footsteps. And most parents are leaving this to be. You see, a girl is caught with a boyfriend and the mother just says, ah, it happened before, let's just leave it, right? Mm-hmm. Things like that are what leading our generation into poverty right now because they're saying that parents themselves, right, they are leaving, they're just accepting it, saying that, no, Gen Z, Gen Z. Mm-hmm. They're just accepting it and saying that it's okay to do that and actually letting the problem progress. Mm-hmm. So they're saying that ignorance, that acceptance is what we want parents to stop if we're actually going to tackle the problem of any marriages. And I've uh, you know, cited that issue of, um, uh, I mean, you're going to come here, remember? So, I, I mean, what do you, why, why do you think um, that parents especially uh, should be held you know, accountable or for the tragedy that befell um, the victim of uh, sexual abuse in Murewa. Okay, we look at the sexual abuse itself, right? When the child got pregnant, the child died after they already gave birth, meaning when they got pregnant, who did notice that this this pregnancy is progressing, right? Mm-hmm. They noticed, and what they do about it, they did nothing. Mm-hmm. They could have gone to the police and reported, but then they didn't go. Mm-hmm. They just let their child die, meaning they are the ones to be responsible. Mm-hmm. Because they could have taken action. The perpetrator right now could be in prison as we speak, yeah. but we are not even sure if the person is in prison. Why? Because the parents didn't do much to save their child in the first place. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that death, that maternal death, is on their hands because they let the blood boil, they let it happen. Mm-hmm. If we're actually going to have, if we, if they had said something, we could have had that girl somewhere here talking to us and telling us her story right now of how she was able to leave the sexual abuse, how she was able to redeem herself, but because they were ignorant and they let her die, mm-hmm. meaning that they should be accountable for it. The parents. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, what then should stakeholders, you know, do uh, to try and solve the issue of sexual abuse and uh, early child marriages in societies? I feel like it's not enough for us to just say that early child marriages are happening and we should just abide to policies. I feel like we should start empowering people to actually talk about their sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. Because we, are, we know that there are a lot of people in our societies which are being sexually abused, right? Mm-hmm. But then they are not confident enough to go and report it themselves that is happening. Mm-hmm. So if we actually looked at the children themselves and giving them the confidence to actually do it, because there are some children who are actually afraid. Mm-hmm. Imagine you are being sexually abused by your father and you go and tell someone else you'll be afraid of what will happen to you the day you go back home mm. and you tell and now everyone knows that that person abused you mm-hmm. so i feel like it should be more of us focusing on the child rather than focusing on the perpetrator because the child is the victim mm. if the child is the victim and we want to focus and help the victim actually progress and leave their state of emotional turmoil right we should be able to give the child confidence enough and an assurance that after you tell us that you are being sexually abused they'll be okay because we have issues of stigmatization mm-hmm. and discrimination. No, she was sexually abused. Don't stay away from me. Things like that happen. So I feel like we should tackle the peers and the children so that we can be able to have a safe environment for the child after the abuse has already happened. Mm, okay. Oh, that's powerful. And uh, I want to hear from, um, you know, Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl. 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 Yes. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Guys, leave me alone. <laughs> okay. So it's okay. I want to uh, find out from you, uh, my sister. Why are you against the idea of holding parents you know, accountable for the sexual abuse of children in light of the present debate? Okay. So I personally don't think that parents are the ones who should be held accountable mm-hmm. for early child marriage. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, you, can, you can pull it. You, you pull the mic. Yeah. Okay. Close to you. Yeah. Why? Because she talked about teachers mm-hmm. and pastors mm-hmm. to be precise right why are we blaming those parents and parental figures mm-hmm. when instead we can shift the blame to the institutions mm-hmm. what institutions am i talking about i'm talking about the school as a whole mm-hmm. not just a teacher right i'm talking about hospitals mm-hmm. police stations and the society the community that mm-hmm. one is residing in for example this girl in morewa you try to question yourself, how didn't society see that she was pregnant? Mm -hmm. How didn't they notice everything that she was going through? Therefore, it's not only supposed to be the parental... From month one to nine? nine months. Mm. Mind you, 
pregnancy is not something that just happens today and yes. then tomorrow you're giving birth, mm-hmm. right? Pregnancy has got stages. We talk of this child nine months, as we just said. Yeah. From month one to the ninth month, she went to registered hospitals. Mm-hmm. What did the nurses and the doctors there do? Mm-hmm. You question. She was 14, but when she actually got pregnant, she was 13, which means she was still in school, mm, right? Mm, what did mm. the teachers do? What did the head do? Mm. She said we should blame teachers, but what did the head do as the head of the institution, mm-hmm. right? We tackled hospitals and school institutions. We also talk of police stations. What did they do about mm-hmm. it? Because we want the nurses to be telling us that there is an underage who came to register a pregnancy mm-hmm. here. Yes. Because those are the stages that a child goes through. Mm-hmm. So now it really doesn't make sense when we say we should blame parents. Because I feel like we would be putting them in a tight spot. Yes. In the fact that we want them to act as God who's omnipresent, who's everywhere. Mm. When looking at our current world, you can be a father and you're in the diaspora. Yes. And not even that, you can be in Harare or Zimbabwe, wherever you reside Mm -hmm. in. But then how much time is the child spending at home? We've got 90% of the time of the child's whole life Mm -hmm. even that they're at school Mm -hmm. and 10% they're at home. When they're at home Saturdays, they go for outings if they're not going for the Sabbath Mm -hmm. change. If they are not doing that, Sunday they go to church Mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yes. Right. So there's very little time for the parents to be having interaction Mm, with the child. That, uh, I mean, child-parent relationship? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's very little time to build that. Hence, we cannot blame it on them. We should blame it on the people who are spending the majority of the time with the child. Mm -hmm. The teachers. The teachers. The school institution on its own. What are you doing as a head if you have got a 14-year-old child pregnant mm, in school? I, I, remember when, I, I remember when I was in, still in high school. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. I, you, I say something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's telling us about his high school experience. I think it dates back to a lot of things because police stations after, like what I said, yeah. when nurses should report, they should also be accountable for the child's safety. Mm. We talk of Maslow's hierarchy yes. of needs. Yes. The last the second from last one talks about security. Mm-hmm. You should feel safe in the environment that you are in. Yeah. Right. Which is once we want the child to be in a position of So I wanted to, you know, um maybe agree. Yes. And when I was when I was still in high school, mm-hmm. I remember there was a time Pagam Brita Ganyaguti Anonymous reports. You know, you just write a name, uh, saying uh, Cheryl and um, uh, Tinashe they're dating. Uh, this are days. Uh, <laughs> you just posted somewhere. Rapelang is dating ningi ningi ningi. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead. So that time, pagam po bad kwaan ma pats chas chas pa faji. Ndi sa kampo di sikisa nyayi do do do. But in the in the, I mean, I, I don't know now. Um, is it still the case Kamurwe Mimi or is it the same case or is it different? Um, I, I don't think it's actually sure because most of the times when you say something like that to the authorities, people label you a snitch, mm-hmm. people label you the snitches person who's trying to be holy. No, but, but, but look, it's, it, it's, it's just you know, anonymous. One gonna kinda like uh, those uh, suggestion box. One gonna kinda. Uh, there's no name there. One gonna rush with God. Ninga ninga. But then there'll always be someone who say, "I trust this one. We know." Exactly. Mm-hmm. Though just in the like, end, obviously, exactly. even if you're no one else. else. Uh-huh. Even if you're innocent, mm-hmm. you might be the one who's labeled to be the person who sent the anonymous. And I don't think anyone would want to feel that way. Mm-hmm. So that's why mm-hmm. poor just stop. So now you see the anonymous letters end up affecting yeah, take, 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 even... Yeah, close to the mic, yeah. So you see now the anonymous letters end up affecting a lot of people, mm-hmm. even if I'm not the one who wrote it. Yeah. I can be deemed as the person who wrote it. Mm-hmm. And even if I deny it, people have already chosen the side they want to believe. Exactly. So even if I defend myself, people are not going to listen. Mm, but, but but what's your take? I want to hear from your side as well, as a neutral. Because this is non-affirmative, that's an, that is an affirmative side. You as a neutral, you coming in as a, as a neutral, what do you think about this issue? Okay, pertaining to the debate, which is about um, the 14-year-old Yokai Dandani, mm-hmm. I believe that the parents should be held accountable mm-hmm. because they were living with her, were they not? And then they see she's pregnant. It came to light that she was raped by her nephew. Mm-hmm. They decided to 
um, they decided to keep quiet about the matter and defend his side and not hers. Mm-hmm. Then they went, they even went on to hide her from society mm-hmm. and moved them to another different place of living where they lived for nine months until she then ended up going to a hospital to give birth. She gave birth through C-section, but um, in but in the end, she ended up dying, yes. leaving the twins. Mm-hmm. You see, how does... Okay, she's an orphan, we get it, but she did have guardians. If you were left to take care of her, how does your heart not hit seeing a 24-year-old mm-hmm. Raping a small girl, like what was what was a twenty four year old at his big age mm-hmm. doing with a small girl? Mm. It doesn't make sense. And then not only that, but before she was shifted, mm. society saw that she was yeah. pregnant. Yeah. No one did anything about it. Mm-hmm. No one went to the police institutions. The teachers at school didn't do anything about it either. No, they're just sitting as if it's something normal, mm-hmm. like a fourteen year old being pregnant. No one did anything about it. Yeah. Now that she's dead, people want to demand compensation and pretend like they care. But when she was alive, they didn't, they didn't take any mm, action then. Mm, mm. So the parents should be held accountable. But so should the school, the society, and even the church. Because what kind of pastor are you mm. if you're not going to tell us how wrong it is mm. to sleep with a child, get her pregnant, and do nothing about it? If you don't get justice for a child, then... What church, what church is this? What school is this? What society is this? So basically, parents should be held accountable, but so should the school, the church, and society as a whole. Mm. Okay. You were, you, want, you were saying something? Yes, I totally agree because you now wonder what type of groomings mm-hmm. and teachings are mm-hmm. we bringing up yeah. when we're saying that our children should come up as Christians mm-hmm. who grow in Christ when they're abusing each other. Yeah. Like she just brought us to the fact that these were relatives. Mm. Now you imagine that. Makuna kuna. But 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 do you think uh, the guy will be arrested? I honestly looking at the situation right now, I do not think he will be arrested unless mm-hmm. people keep persisting on the matter. Mm-hmm. But the only problem now comes to this. Early marriage in Zimbabwe doesn't have like a uh, Proper punishment. Mm. So even if he's arrested, he's going to roam free. Nothing is going to happen to him. She's dead. She has no justice. And even not, right now, isn't it? He found, said, H. Metro says that he's found a job as a bus loader, conductor, whatever we call it. <laughs> now he's busy out there. <laughs> but someone is in their grave whilst they are turning. Even the parents are turning. Ah, and we're guys. not sure sure it's even the last victim. We only yeah. know if he, mm. what if he did that to somebody else or he's going to do that to somebody mm. else as the conductor that he is right yeah, now. Because yeah. now the only the only way that the only reason the truth came out is because the parents want compensation. Oh, okay. But if it wasn't for that, the truth probably wouldn't have come out. Now we don't know. What of the other victims maybe, that were not talking Maybe about? it was also because of the pressure from the media itself. Because remember, he, H Metro was, you know, following almost yeah, every detail. Like, yeah. okay, uh, burial. Look at this guy; he's smiling. You know, they were like putting pressure. They were taking pictures of him, uh, laughing. Like, okay, you are at a funeral of a fourteen-year-old, and they're laughing. You're laughing. You know, you, you know, people were just Tragic. so. Don't you think maybe oh, it would then lead to his arrest? Maybe it would lead to his arrest. We're not sure, but then we believe that. He is not actually going to come to justice as much as that girl's life exactly. costs. Exactly. Mm. Until Zimbabwe, as a country, Does something comes about up it. with a proper punishment for these perpetrators mm. that go after little children. Because, okay, look at the world's population. Mm. Like, let's look at Zimbabwe's population. Is it not 16 billion? Mm. Certainly, 16, 16 billion. 16 million. 16 million people. Yes, actually. yes. Yeah. 16 million people. Mm-hmm. And the only person that he found. That he wanted to sleep with was a 14-year-old. How does that make sense? Where, where, are, where, where are people his age? Ah, guys. <laughs> ah, guys, it's now getting late. It's, these guys are just, you know, they're, they're fuming. They're furious. Hello? But anyways, uh, Cheryl. I mean, um, what then should stakeholders right, uh, do to try and solve the issue of sexual, you know, abuse and, and child marriages in our societies. Okay, 
Now I think this is where stakeholders should come in and mm-hmm. bring things like consultations mm-hmm. and awareness campaigns. Mm-hmm. Only to mention, but of yeah. course, mm-hmm. because when we're talking of consultation now. I'm picturing something whereby we can call the people in the community, yeah. right? Different communities, not just one. Mm-hmm. And then we have the maybe at a school institution or a church. Let's take school, for example. And we sit down with these, um, maybe the mothers of the community. Then we tell them, maybe we see something fishy. Chipo is doing mm-hmm. ABCD. Mm-hmm. May you please watch out for her and tell us each and every step that she takes. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, if we're saying we're blaming parents, it's useless because as I said, we're spending very little time mm-hmm. with our parents in the same yeah, way. Yeah. So now the best thing we can do is engage every single possible group mm-hmm. that we can. Yeah. So we take those ladies mm-hmm. or mothers, so to say, yeah. and we now appeal to them for their assistance so that they monitor any sketchy behavior mm-hmm. that we find. Yeah. Right. And now talking of awareness campaigns, we can have the police people, policemen and women mm-hmm. coming to the schools and telling them, like what we just alluded to, yeah. the perpetrator was smiling. And up until now, if Zimbabwe doesn't take a stand, then we do not have him going to jail. And how many other people are is he going to be pregnant? Mm. It now becomes a really tragic story. And we're just here sitting, acting so sad, sobbing and all that, when nothing is taking place. I, I, I heard you saying that um, the, the deceased was an orphan, right? So who's going to take care of the kids? Like, remember, the, um, twins. she left um, twins. Two twins behind. So who's going to take care of those uh, twins? Remember, it's, they're two kids. I think... If this man is arrested, I'm not saying he mustn't be, or he shouldn't be arrested, but I'm just saying, who's going to take care of the kids? I, I have a question. <laughs> Even if he's not arrested, is a, what, what do we, okay, a, a, decent, a decent word would be, Bus loader, as a bus loader, <laughs> how, how how good are his earnings that he's going to take of himself and, and two kids? kids. Yeah. And and especially also, at the rate inflation is growing. At. Maybe when he's out of jail, probably he would go and uh, mold bricks. But then if but, those girls are kids, or like they're if those children are girls, right? Mm-hmm. How are we so sure that he won't do the same thing exactly. to them that mm. he did to that girl? Because yeah. he likes small girls now. Mm. But uh, I want to ask you something. Yes. Uh, don't you think, uh, you know, like you said, um, because kids are spending less time with, with their, their parents. parents. Yes. Yeah, I understand. But at the same time, there are situations like this one. These are relatives. Yes. And yes. probably, you know, relatives when they are just alone with no supervision of a guardian or a guardian or um, a parent. Some of these issues are happening. Um, I remember, you know, going to a certain church, uh, you know, some time ago, and people were confessing. I did this with my relative. I did this with my sister. I did this with my relative. I did this with... I'm like, guys, relative, like, yeah. Then when I sat down with those guys, you know, like one-on-one, yes. why and how did that happen? They were like, saying, oh, you know what? There are situations whereby we are just the two of you and then probably TV, probably something, then will lead to that. I mean, how do you see that? I don't What's your take on that? Like that should be an excuse at all. Hmm. Which is why I raised the issue of awareness campaigns. Now we're talking about those people at the police stations. They should come and tell us, mm-hmm. outline clearly to the students mm-hmm. and the underage the punishments that they'll go through whatever hardship that mm-hmm. they go through. Because if you know what will happen to you after you do something bad, yes, then yes. you certainly have that sense of fear mm-hmm. instilled in you. And you won't do it, yeah, right? Yeah. So if you know the consequences, it's kind of disciplines mm-hmm. and humbles you. Yes, yes. And now we have less of these child marriages happening. What happens? This one is a 17-year-old boy. Yes. Mm-hmm. This one is a 14-year-old girl. Yes. And they did what they did. Then there's a young one. Now, how exactly? How do you <laughs> treat that situation? I, 
okay. I feel like both of them, they are under age, right? Mm-hmm. So the first thing to do, I don't think they are able to take care of that child. So I feel the first thing to do is to come clean because everyone has already seen it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That child deserves a better life than the one that they are trying to go and give the child yeah. because they already made a mistake. Mm-hmm. So the child should be taken to somebody else who can take care of the child. And then for them, I really am not sure what to do with them because they have to be told why they should not do it again because mm-hmm. they already have a life of their with their genes and their mm-hmm. blood now, right? They're supposed to know that they can't keep doing this and they should also tell other people of their generation to not mm-hmm. do it also because all 17-year-old boys out there, you can't be taking care of a child and the mm-hmm. 14-year-old girl should tell other 14-year-old girls that you can't be taking care of the child at this age. You still have things you should be doing. You still have a life to live. Mm-hmm. So I feel like them as the people we've already experienced it, right? They should be moving outside there to tell people that we should stop such practices rather than trying to incriminate themselves mm-hmm. with already mistakes that they've already committed. Mm. Okay, no, that's fine. I I, I, I hear you. But uh, guys, we hear debating about this issue. Um, should we sue parents who do not take action to protect their children from early ma- uh, early child marriages. It's happening these days. It's so rampant. Uh, they, they ask, how old is she now? They're like, she's 16. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you look at how most people write their form fours. They don't even go back to school. No, yes. yeah, she's married. Married? Uh, Where? Unless you see her holding a baby next to you mm. when and you're like, lying in okay and you're like, it's how you would have learned together. <laughs> hey, like, oh, I got what you. do you mean? <laughs> in the shock of your life. And, pre- of, and the pressure starts, you know, starts crippling in, like uh, the yeah. or something. Yeah, now you're go- it's most of the time, God, it's, it's situations like that. Mm-hmm. You see your fellow peer, someone you know, mm-hmm. or your friend, they are married, they have a child. Mm-hmm. You're going to be like, maybe, maybe this actually makes more sense than being in school. <laughs> so you're going to start thinking, you're going to start telling yourself, of course it's not the truth. Yes. But you're going to start telling yourself, maybe I should try it too. Mm-hmm. Oh, now yes. you try it too. Everything. Everything goes down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are here on the Genius Kids show um, with the affirmative side and the non-affirmative side. Uh, they early child marriages. Again, um, Rapilang, do you think if she to pay pay or we have to adapt to or what? I, I don't understand. Remember uh, some time ago, uh age uh, of consent was sixteen. Then it also changed what to eighteen uh, because of Sanga uh, Sotonya. That was not consent that you That was consent, a piece of you know. <laughs> so now what, what's your take on that? And also what do you think should be done to you know totally I feel like if we're going to say we want to stop this problem, we can't just do it in two seconds because it's a huge problem. Mm-hmm. So it takes time. And we have to use that time that we already have. Maybe by 2030, we should have no more early marriages. Mm-hmm. Right? And when you're saying, how are we going to do that? We can't keep setting ages of consent, mm-hmm. ages of consent, because it's not constant. If you told me that my age of consent is... 22 maybe in the next coming years at 21 i'll still do something mm-hmm. stupid like that yeah exactly. and then at the end of the day we still have these early marriages right and the more we increase the age of consent the more early marriages we are now having it mm-hmm. i feel like if we are actually going to tackle this problem we have to tackle it at all sectors of life mm-hmm. if we are going to still fear in the parents by suing them we should also look at a way to punish schools which allow this to happen mm-hmm. a way to punish all sectors of life which allow this to happen mm-hmm. even the child themselves they should be told that if you do this something will happen to you because we can't keep saying that if you are 14 and you are 17 and you do something like this mm-hmm. we will both leave you to do keep doing it over and over and over again there should be requirements for every single situation and if we are going to have such a situation Right. We should also have places like the child institutions where people or orphans are told because most of the times the people who are getting married are orphans mm-hmm. and some states of Zimbabwe don't even know their rights. Mm-hmm. Some boys don't even know that I'm supposed to be in school right now because they are working in farms. Yeah, some yeah. some places of Zimbabwe are still wearing, wearing mapa and shashiku. Mm-hmm. 
we have to fix that because yeah. we can't modernize Harare and leave Binga behind. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We have to actually look at all sectors of life. And when you look at all sectors of life, we improve everyone at the same rate. Yes. But at the end of the day, we have no early child marriages. Mm-hmm. If we're going to improve mothers, let's improve fathers also. Those in diaspora <laughs> should also be involved so that we know what my child is doing. Even if you are not there, at least you know that my child is still safe in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Things like that. And I think if we actually improve on our policies as a country, mm-hmm. right, and actually put f- fierce law enforcement, we end up with a safer Zimbabwe for our children. Because things are already happening. And even though we are modernized, this modern society is just bringing in more problems. Mm-hmm. So we should, you know. When you say law enforcement, like, what's an example of a law you would think would be effective for the problem at hand? Okay. I say, but long ago, there used to be these things about death penalties, right? Yes. Let's say you committed murder or sexual abuse or things like that and rape, you'd be given the death penalty. And yes. in those times, murder was really something shocking because yes. one person could be murdered in 27 years. And you'd actually be shocked, how did we get to a point now that we have armed robbers when such things could have been stopped back then? So I feel like we should have those harsh punishments, like the death penalty. So rape should be given death penalty, maybe. So uh, at the end of the day, no one will want to rape anyone. Because the fear is the one thing that you may scare So you're advocating for death penalty? I'm advocating for death penalty because girls and boys <laughs> are being raped out there. If at the end of the day, a girl is, is dead because she was raped, in why can't you say, in their life, life, and you're uh, laughing at it, mm. how is that a fair situation? Someone's life should cost someone else's life. Yes, mm. a life for a life. Mm-hmm. Guys, one other one is blood of fear and you're Jerry. Death penalty. But the death should not be like a fast death. Yeah, mm. Those people are supposed life to die in a slow and cruel <laughs> death. <laughs> <laughs> Suffering. Because that yeah. child ah. suffered for nine months like with we, that big belly. Exactly. Exactly. You know, even burning them to death is mm. not as painful as what that child would have gone through. Mm. Guys, but at the same time, I have a question, guys. Honestly, like a genuine question. Yes. Um, I've had, I've been in the other, I mean, my circles, and my my circles, I mean, my debates, like I said, and the dressing. Yeah. Uh, how the dressing is also contributing to whatever the you know, so my paper treaters, right? Mm-hmm. And you becoming the victim. So I'm not going to ask my bum shorts, mini crop skirts, tops. crop tops, you know, and you are um, enticing, or you are maybe, <laughs> or maybe the dude is seduced. Your own downfall. You yeah. see, yeah. So, I mean, what do you think about that? Um, I think the dressing. There's two sides to this. Yeah, two sides to everything. First story. of all, if people, if people think the way someone dresses is the reason that person gets raped. <laughs> That is a backward way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And that person, we cannot say they're normal. You can't say that a person who's wearing something short was raped because they're wearing something short. Mm. Let's look at the crazy people, Mm -hmm. not only in Zimbabwe. Like, let's look at it worldwide. Like, okay, let's not call them crazy, okay? Like, let's say mentally unstable. Mm -hmm. Don't they walk naked? But the rape cases of those who walk naked and are mentally unstable are fewer than to those that are wearing clothes. So just because it's short doesn't necessarily mean that that is contributing to rape. And also, if you are attracted by someone's legs and that pushes you to rape them, mm-hmm. something's wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Something's really wrong with you. You should accept that this person is consent. Because at the end of the day, I'm wearing what I want to wear because I feel like wearing it. It's really hot outside, mm-hmm. and I want to wear a crop top because there's air. I need to feel fresh. <laughs> you know, not only that, but so what's the use of the clothes now? Mm-hmm. The short clothes out mm-hmm. there that they are busy selling. If I can't wear them, then why, so, why sell them? In the, the first place? Let's look at how Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Let's look at Zimbabwe. Sheru, Sheru. I think that we should look at what's really happening here. Mm-hmm. Are these girls not actually being raped because of what they are wearing? Yes, Mm -hmm. we want to wear what we want to wear. And it's not wrong at all. Mm -hmm. Because as uh, Val said, that is why the clothes are being designed. Mm -hmm. And there are people in business, Mm -hmm. fashion designers and all that. Mm -hmm. They want money. So yes, we have to buy the clothes. But I think it's now a situation whereby... We have to, mothers now play a role in this as well as fathers. Mm-hmm. Let's not take them out of the picture. Where they now have to sit down with both the genders of their children mm-hmm. and tell them 
if it's the fact that ladies are going to keep on wearing their mini skirts mm-hmm. and revealing clothes, so to say, tell the boy child that you should be able to overcome such temptation. Mm-hmm. If the parents cannot handle it, let's go to the church boy. Mm-hmm. But now we have a problem whereby our sanctuary is not listening to anyone at all. Mm. And we have a problem coming from some of the parents themselves, yeah. whereby they tell us that you don't tell my child what to wear. Mm. Yes. That's yes. not your place. Or you don't tell my child what to yeah. take. Child. But guys, I, 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 okay, another genuine question. Yes. Like was I, I, I personally I think uh, I mean clothes mm-hmm. or fashion is contributing. I think personally, too, but yeah. it's a smaller okay. percent. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, I understand. But here's a question: Do you know that commercial sex workers they've got a certain way of clothes mm-hmm. that they put on yes. when they are you know doing their thing? Yes. Meaning that meaning to say, if they put on clothes and go to normal, they won't get clients. Are we in agreement? Yes, I am. Just agree. normal clothes. They won't agree. get yeah, uh, clients. Uh, right? But they have to, uh, they have to <laughs> well, put on not, something um, which is sexy, probably, you know, living most of most part of the board, I mean, yes, outside, yes, yes, yes. exposed. So it means the, that dressing, that type of dressing, it, it, it attracts the men to say, okay, then post this up when you have a good time, but you know, Sherry, I love you. Then you say, ah, no, no, I don't like, then you know, but you see what I'm figuring out. Yes, yes. It's so much, it's a good thing. We also rap also, okay? Not saying, guys, you should rap, but it's because of the dressing, but we are saying contributing. But isn't it even people who are wearing long clothes out there are also still victims rich. of rape? No, no, I understand. I totally understand. But you know what was a blamer? Then I'm going to say, hey, but now that's a good thing. Example of like my commercial sex workers. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say dressing, you know, suit the type of, you know, <laughs> attract. Looking at it this way, right? Mm-hmm. When the commercial sex workers wears, wear those clothes, right? And they stand there on the road and wait for somebody to be attracted. Yes. They are doing it willingly. Meaning at the end of the day, it's not rape, right? But when someone like me just go into a shop, no, it's ah, not about this rape. looks nice. No, it's not, about, about what? it's not about the rape. It's about, it's about dressing to attract. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? When you dressing wear something for yourself. to attract or probably dressing to seduce. Mm-hmm. But then not everyone dresses to seduce. Exactly. Some just of dress because it looks this, nice. And then they that. end up getting raped. Of course, I understand. But okay. the contribution part now. I think mm-hmm. it does. If we look at it this way. <laughs> Which way? <laughs> Let me show you the way. Which way? Let that me way. show you the <laughs> way. <laughs> that way. No, you okay. said that way. That way. Yeah, that's that what I'm about to say. Yes. You see, if we talk about how dressing is contributing to, to like, at, is a force of attraction, uh-huh. it can lead to rape. You know, I believe that if it's, a, if it's okay, let's look at rape first, then we'll look at attraction. Mm-hmm. If we're talking about rape, mm-hmm. There is absolutely, no matter how small, all of, how small of a percentage it is, nothing can, can, nothing can be a cause for rape mm-hmm. because the fault is of the perpetrator, mm-hmm. not of the victim. I think that's one of the problems we face mm-hmm. in today's day, mm-hmm. in today's, in today's in age. Generation. Mm-hmm. Yes, today's generation. Thank you. You see, like, I'm like, we're like, she got raped because of what she was wearing. Mm-hmm. That's why we can't come clean. Mm-hmm. That's why you see people get raped. They can't even speak up. Because you know people are going to be like, Anga mm-hmm. It's because of what she was wearing. Mm-hmm. But in reality, it's not because of what she was wearing. It's the fault of the, the perpetrator. perpetrator. Because the mindset that the perpetrator has is the one that's pushing him to do what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. Not because of what she's wearing. I disagree with Val on this one. <laughs> and okay, let me take it up a bit. <laughs> I think the ladies are going to hate me for this one. Ah, Disclaimer, okay. please, ah. don't okay. kill me. Okay. Yes. But okay. We want to talk about the dressing, and I feel like it strongly contributes because, mm-hmm. like what he said, mm-hmm. we look at the commercial sex workers, go to the avenues, they are wearing miniskirts. Mm-hmm. Okay, why I say the ladies might hate me for this? They want, we want to wear our miniskirts, yes. fair and fine. Mm-hmm. But then my argument is why are you pushing your dress or your skirt down mm-hmm. when it goes up? Yeah. 
if you are wearing that, let it go up to the extent exactly. that it reaches. Exactly. So it reviews everything mm-hmm. because when you wore it in the first place, did you not know that when you walk there is going to be friction and then it's gonna come up? You knew. So my argument is when you wear that dressing of yours, mm-hmm. since you it's so hot and you can't wear something decent enough in other people's eyes, let's yes, I will stand by the fact that our definitions of decent mm-hmm. are different yeah. but i i still stand by the fact that dressing strongly contributes mm-hmm. and if you are now a girl maybe not a commercial sex worker yes. so to say yes. please if you wear something short then don't pull it down because why are you wearing it in the first place Val, would you go to um, church wearing a miniskirt mm-hmm. would you with a crop top <laughs> Let's be honest. Would you go to church? Nah, nah, nah. Yes, <laughs> I would. Wow. <laughs> no, yes, yes, no, I mean, I'm, in, no, I'm in God's house. To you, God God listen, God pain. even loves the prostitutes, does he not? He does. Doesn't he? He, he does. does. He 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 Prostitutes. But God know, loves no matter what thieves. Yes. God loves everybody. No matter yeah. what I'm wearing, God loves okay, me. Okay, but the church now, mm-hmm. the gospel, the doctrine, is saying something totally different. I feel like oh, yeah. the church and doctrine should focus on more issues other than what I'm wearing. <laughs> let's focus yeah. on these let's kids. Go to church Wait, time. let's focus on these kids. Wait, let's it focus on sense. these kids who are working around pregnant, but trying to talk about me. And See, like hey, you, you're not wearing properly for church. Uh, what about that one who is pregnant? Is it, is it, is it okay for a 14-year-old to be pregnant in church? <laughs> but it's okay for a 14-year-old to be pregnant in church, but not for me to wear mini uh, It well, really makes sense what she's saying. Because at the end of the day, even if you come without shoes to church, you still pray and you still move around like that. Well, and at the end of the well, day, yes, God listens long, to anybody. Look, without shoes is now a different issue. Val, let's go to church. Yes, yeah. fine. Where yes, we, we go, go to church. Or or yes, okay. we go. Oh, why you? Maybe, maybe, maybe let me, I, I want you to come close to your mic. Yes. Let me ask you this, Val. Yes. Would you go to church naked? Let me put it that way. Would you go to church naked? God still loves you. Okay, fine. Yes. Would you go to church like that? No. Why? Because I wouldn't be comfortable walking around naked. Okay. So if you're half naked? I would not go to church. Because I'm not comfortable, not because of what they're saying. If you live your life for people, you're uh-huh. not going to live your life. Mm-hmm. It's right. not your life anymore. It's their life. You know, it's not necessarily their life. Guys, it's their life and your life. It's guys, not our life. Oh. Let, let, let's be realistic here. Mm-hmm. Let's be realistic. But okay, but here is the issue. Because I, I totally, I, I feel like um, dressing contributes. Yeah, it does. So do I. That's the reason why I brought up that issue of maybe... The dressing, the way these uh, commercial sex workers dress. Mm-hmm. But why not take uh, 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 that way because of the Zoba Mar? Yeah. Right? If yeah, I don't put on clothes like this, on the uh, dark or something like that. Mm-hmm. Then there's an issue, uh, another issue that I want to. Uh, because, because, the, because the issue of rape is not really about the only the edge. Mm-hmm. It's about everybody. Yeah. Right? It's not even gender. Someone too. in, in here 20s. Can be raped, yes. mm-hmm. right? Yes. But no, you have to agree. Yes. yes. But Very I much. want you guys to then tell me, because in any maybe is a defendant in court. Let's say I'm the one. I don't see you raped. You raped. Mm. But the guys, but I'm not going to for years. But it's okay. In na nagumu rape, but tagada na naga tundi say you're a bobo. Then we did the deed. Then after that, I go into in ini the mu rape. Wait, was it consensual? That's yes. The point. Oh. So, you, 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 know, you see what, what's happening these days? I fall in love with someone. Mm-hmm. We're dating. Ah, but, but, then I promise you maybe to buy you a house or I'll promise yeah. to buy you a, a nice iPhone 15 Pro Max. And uh, then we are doing whatever that we're doing, then right? Then fall out. Exactly. Then we, yeah, I fall out. Then... Yeah, um, was was you know, there's actually... Um, yeah, was yeah, a I feel like we should take it the technology. But my ask to an advantage or would he at Nagusopo approach and promise of to change a relationship to la to 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 rep? That's why we're going on. That's why I'm saying we should take it to the technology side. I once saw this article where they had this technology to tell if this uh, act of sex was forced <laughs> or it was consensual. Exactly. So if we had such technology in Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. then we could tell if this woman is actually someone who's just all crazy over, exactly. over not getting what she wanted mm-hmm. or if she's someone who's actually facing 
an actual problem. Mm. So I okay. feel like technology wise, modernizing is then going to be in our cause, helping our yes, cause. Yes. Okay, but at the moment with what you said, we're just being idealists. Talking about the practical facts behind the theories that we have, mm-hmm. behind the ongoing status quo as it is, mm-hmm. what can we really do? Yes. Because like what he said, women now take advantage of the fact that mm. I did not get the house that I was promised. Okay. Exactly. I did not get the Mercedes Benz mm. that I was Let's promised. Let's look at it this way. Yes. Like like you said, like they were in agreement and then they had a fallout. Exactly. So they slept with each other. Like Let's give an example. When? Like three days ago, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then she reposted, like, now like now it's like, it's been two weeks and she hasn't gotten what she wanted. Mm-hmm. Like, she goes to the port. That is not rape. Yeah, you know. If you are a victim of rape, it is said that you are supposed to report your case then. within 72 hours so that they are able so to tell what there was supposed time frame. or not. Yeah, exactly. Be because now if you, if, if you mm. come up in here after two weeks, you had a consensual, you know, you had a consensual, yes. what do you call it? Um, what do we say? Uh, that encounter, that yeah. one. Yeah, a, <laughs> you had a consensual encounter, right? Uh-huh. And then you come and say that you were raped just because you didn't get what you mm. wanted. That mm. is not rape, because why, why report it I, like I, I, I days think, later? I think I agree with you when it comes to Nyadze time frame. Yes. Um, the time frame. Which is also, it's not to say that you can't do it. Because it's the time frame. When this happened, it's like a total of nine months for it to come out. Nine to in two weeks. In two weeks, and you see, um, which is something again, you know, one, take on a chin, gadget, gadget, or when you go, but we saw blowers, but we saw blowers. But in this case, like their relatives probably are the relatives. Yes. We're like, ah, but it's because of some kind of you know, like that. In but it's conflict now. Saga yeah. is fine. If it wasn't that for the is. funeral or the death, you guys wait. Uh, I, oh, I, 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 I'm sure they can be just yeah. 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 Because there's a lot of kids out there who are victims, but right now we don't even know. And what if anything. something like that actually happened, but the child didn't die? Mm. I hey, think we can even why. look at an example. Remember, even... the nine-year-old, was yeah. it last year? Last year, but one. Yes. One was dead by a father. Mm-hmm. She gave birth, she's still alive. Mm-hmm. You see? Mm-hmm. So, I think that's why we now have a conflict when it comes to relatives mm-hmm. getting in these situations. Yes. Because like what you said, there's an argument on the father's side mm. and on the maternal side as well. So now they're saying we want to protect both our children. Yes. But now one of the children dies. And now it's a case where we're demanding mm. compensation mm. from who? You see now? When you feed the birth. That's actually Nine something months. I wanted to understand. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the, infl- the info slide uh, was telling us about how the 14-year-old from Murewa died, is it yes. not? And then they told us about the parents refusing to have a burial until they get a compensation mm-hmm. from the hospital. A compensation for what? The man of the half of the bathroom. But you can't do that. You know, we don't do that. How we don't do that yet. Okay. In the first place, you took the child there to the hospital. You gave them the idea. Maybe you even gave them the idea, the idea for a cessation because maybe she's too young to give birth. Compensation! So it's your fault. Why are you asking for compensation for something that you let happen? You you killed her. So you asking for compensation from yourself. The hospital is not even to blame for it. I'm thinking, you know, I'm just thinking then you go to my thinking my things are going up yeah, <laughs> my things are mm-hmm. so uh to what extent do you guys think uh, that social media is contributed in exposing to i mean to expose these rape cases that's happening in remote areas in order you know actually i think social media is actually playing a huge role in this mm-hmm. a lot of people say social media is a disadvantage all that social media this social media that because like people are saying that it has a lot of disadvantages but if we weigh it down it has more advantages than it has disadvantages mm-hmm. it's situations like this that we need social media for mm-hmm. let's look at it this way if social media was not there would we, would we have known would case. the perpetrator mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. would we would would the victim would people be fighting for her to get justice not right either. now, because the society saw her pregnant, they didn't do anything, it's mm. not so. Now that she's dead and social media has brought it to light, the they society, want to support, exactly, the society yes, is not supporting that we don't support child the media. Jail child, what? whatever. It doesn't make sense, eh? <laughs> So I think it's the social media that's at the end of the day creating awareness for these girls, ah, these boys, these ah. people who are dying. Exactly. Social media is the first awareness campaign that we have. Yeah, that's we have. Citizen journalism. We call it citizen journalism. Whereby I just open my phone, 
take a video whatever that hap- that's yes. happening yes and now then we post. post then it, it gets to fun. people in the diaspora yeah. people whatever you know it just, just goes viral because yes. that's the thing people saw that people nowadays they don't buy those hard copy newspapers mm-hmm. anymore people are just doing technological things it's not people some people were like you know what most of the things that are happening here we're writing them in newspapers the word is not reaching out there mm. magazines the word is the word is not reaching out there yes. then people came up with the solution when i see something that i feel like ha huh, people should know i'm going to film it mm-hmm. people are going to see yeah. something is going to be done about it because mm. now it's causing a stir on social media because when you put something on social media and it is is irrelevant mm-hmm. the people are not going to keep quiet mm. the comments the comment section <laughs> is going to be up there you know exactly <laughs> brutal exactly yeah. now people are going to take action you I get i think as an answer to your question yes. we can all agree that we have reached the verdict that social media is actually playing a huge role mm-hmm. in no exposing is. these issues yes. which is actually at the positive side mm-hmm. of the picture mm-hmm. because we would not be debating the case True. and we would not have ways to mitigate these type of mm-hmm. situations because mm-hmm. they keep on growing yeah. so social media is a really helpful too now and they're also Great. creating a bigger base for these girls and these boys why because right now imagine the people who are supporting the person who the perpetrator yes. were more than the people who are supporting the death of Victor. the girl right mm-hmm. then now we have more people who are saying this girl needs justice mm-hmm. and we're going to overweigh the people who are supporting the perpetrator yeah. so at the end of the day we have more justice for people yes. Yes. the victim nice. will get justice yes even <laughs> if they are in their grave they'll get justice justice should be served. otherwise the story we will not leave it will come back next week. exactly so as we as we guys conclude Um I would want to start Newe um uh, Rapelan as um, a junior member of parliament mm-hmm. what do you think should be done or what are you going to advocate for in the parliament um in regards to these child marriages as a way to eradicate you know child, early child marriage I feel like for my side right it's mostly about law enforcement because at the end of the day i know of some people who actually were able to pass their o levels and a levels mm-hmm. but never got a chance to do anything about it because they ended up married mm-hmm. so at the end of the day even if those people were now 17 or they were 16 and almost 18 they were still 16 mm-hmm. and they never got justice so it's mostly about law enforcement and even if we're going to have those awareness campaigns After those awareness campaigns if law enforcement is not done mm-hmm. we won't reach a consensus we won't reach anything if we are not going to enforce the laws we already have if the age of consent is 18 and someone has intent 18 even if i'm turning in december mm-hmm. and it's still mm-hmm. january and i get married i should be regarded as someone who was involved in an early marriage and early pregnancy mm-hmm. if it's going to happen later it hasn't happened yet mm-hmm. stop it before it starts mm-hmm. before i die of maternal death yeah. things should happen the perpetrator should be arrested no matter who the person is whether it's the father the son the nephew the whatever they should mm. be in prison as long as they did something wrong to me because it's a crime and a crime should remain a crime a crime yeah if it's a crime even if it's done by someone you hold dear to your heart they mm-hmm. should be arrested and you should not let it slide yes. if you are going to if it's going to happen and you see that ah oh, no this person looks like they are being raped mm-hmm. talk to that person exactly. reach that sister brother be your brothers and sisters keeper mm. because at the end of the day mm. it's going to be said the murewa community no one yeah, will then they, end up saying the they won't say zimbabwe in zimbabwe yes. if they look at the news they will say the murewa community mm-hmm. at the end yes. of the day we we'll start saying there's something wrong in murewa. Yeah, murewa so we should be our brother's keeper and if we're going to be our brother's keeper let's make sure that even if my brother is not able to report mm-hmm. i can report for them because you talked about those on- anonymous things yes. we can start introducing them even if you're in the community mm-hmm. be that person for someone else because at the end of the day good karma comes big Uh, that's very powerful and um, my sister uh, you know Val Shambare okay. um, by the way Val she's 16 you know still a child <laughs> and Rabelan she's still 15 still a child <laughs> and uh, Sheryl uh, 17 years still a child by the way okay so um Val. Mm, I feel you, 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 yeah, t- give me the first step to stopping to like okay, I don't know like if I'm going to fully stop it or just like lower the, the cases here is going to be to stop blaming the parents first. Mm-hmm. If we all look at the causes of early marriages all the time, the, 
he's to blame, she's to blame, he's to blame, she's to blame. If we play the, the blame, blame game, game all the time, we're not trying to find a solution for this one, just basically blaming people, blaming mm. him, blaming mm. her, and we're further away from the solution mm-hmm. than closer. You, you understand? Yeah. So, most of the time, parents, yeah, like, yes, they marry their children off, but why? We look at how, we look at those who are living in poverty. They don't see it as they are hurting their child. Mm-hmm. They see it as an advantage. They're like, our child is, was suffering. Our child is suffering even more. Yeah. Then they're like, let's marry her off to someone who can give her a better life. Yes. You understand? But I'm not saying that is right. I'm saying parents are doing this with their heart in the right place. Yes. But it is wrong. Mm-hmm. Now, that's when society is supposed to come in mm-hmm. and tell, like, educate them. Tell them, yes. What you do, your heart is in the right place. It's amazing to do something like that for your child. To want, not like to get your child married, but like to want a better future for your child. Mm-hmm. But marrying them off is not the answer. Yeah. Let's look at how parents who can't send their children to school. Some can d- depend on BEAM. Some can depend on scholarship programs. Yes, can we yes. not? There are people out there who are willing to like assist in the in giving children school fees, mm-hmm. then there are people who donate clothes, yes, are they not? So yes. you understand, like, society is supposed to then step in as awareness, like, to tell the parents, yes, your right is, your your heart is in the right place, mm-hmm. but the approach you're taking is yeah, wrong. It's wrong. Let's yeah. try to take a different approach. Mm. Like Rapelang said, yeah, law enforcement is also another, um, another step to getting a solution for mm-hmm. this problem. Because mm-hmm. as long as these people know that, even if I have sex with a child, mm-hmm. even if I marry someone who's below the age of 18, yes. nothing is going to be done to me. They are going to keep doing it and it's going to keep getting out of control yes. until yes. something has been done mm-hmm. about it. So the death penalty is a good idea, a very good idea, very. a very slow and painful death. You know, like, and you know what? Let like, them suffer. Like, Die slowly. It's, it's not supposed Die. to be a secret. <laughs> Let the people see it happening so that you know that if, if I do it, that's going to happen. But, to that's going but to not be only me. that, we can also introduce, um, you know, rapists, perpetrators, and people who agree to marry children at young mm-hmm. ages. You see a 50-year-old getting married to a small child. That, that doesn't even make sense. Mm. If death penalty doesn't work out, you know, if you scared this, the other gender, I'm so sorry. If you scared the other <laughs> gender, that's not our gender, the males. You know, if we introduce a law and we say that if you marry a child below the age of 18 or if you have sexual intercourse with a child, your reproductive organ is going to be cut off. Ad- Who's going to go out there and have a child? Oh, no. We accept. Oh, who is, yes. Who's going yes. to go out there and have a child? No. <laughs> Take you care see? of yourself. So uh, law enforcement and society um, educating the mm-hmm. parents on a, right, on a better approach to the problem. Okay. As well as the peers. Mm-hmm. You know, like, do not think, guys, I'm still a child as well. Let's not encourage each other to do the wrong things mm, out there. Yes. Mm, Let us not give each other the bad peer yes, pressure. Yes, very Please. true. I agree. That's and I, um, Sharil, in, uh, in, in, I mean, parting remarks, uh, I want to hear from you. What do you think? What's your, what's your suggestion on this one? I totally agree with my ladies. Mm-hmm. Right. In the sense that, as I already alluded to when I was starting the argument, we cannot solely blame parents Mm -hmm. on their own we can't yeah so it's now a situation whereby we have to look at society Mm -hmm. and we have to work with the government well the government actually has to work for us Mm. with us and have these institutions Mm -hmm. now imparting this cutting of genitals (laughs) right yeah Yeah. Yeah. exactly (laughs) so we now have those measures that are put in place because in a nutshell honestly from my point of view I believe that we cannot blame parents because they do not have the requisite Mm -hmm. power to combat this type of situation. Mm -hmm. Very true. So we should blame it on the institution. Mm. You know what? That was the Genius Kids on the Ola 7 podcast show. I was talking to uh, Sheryl Chasagara, 17-year-old from Northwest High School, and Val Shambare, 16-year-old from Townet, group of uh, group of schools uh, that's in Glendale. And also Rapilang uh, M- Muzuza. Muzuza. Yes, yes. Okay, exactly. 15 year old from Watershed College, all the way from Marondera. You know, these brilliant minds. So, Sebabiri Gumbao, please. Yeah. 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 Y
please stay away from kids eh baba stay away from young girls eh then also young girls be very careful out there if you happen to get or to be involved in such a situation or whatever entanglement whatever the legit baba please report so that you know your report you each other the next girl the next one and the next one thank you so much guys for watching this is the all seven show the genius kids got us bye bye they say beauty is skin deep Well, at Ice and D Beauty Store, we provide skin products specifically tailored to repair any type of skin and blemishes. From moisturizers, shea butter, knuckle remover, body lotions, spot correctors, and a whole lot more. We have stores and representatives right around the globe. Contact any of our representatives nearest to you. For more information, contact Ison D Glowing Store. It's the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home Giant Petroleum Limitless Energy